Hi, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Yue, and I, along with my colleagues, Kayla Heath, Sam Graham, and Savi Hammerman, created ARIA, a manual canary analysis tool. Let's take a look at the topics we'll be covering today. First, I'll introduce a hypothetical company, Chart Health, and walk you through deployment challenges they will face. Then I will go through several modern deployment options and the pros and cons of each. Finally, I will explain why a team might choose canary deployment over other types of modern deployments. Next, Sam will go over why existing canary solutions would not entirely meet the team's needs before introducing a solution that will, our application, ARIA. Caleb will go into the technical deep dive of ARIA's architecture, followed by Savi, who will give insight into the technical decisions and engineering challenges we face during development. And finally, he will touch on some great ideas we have for future work should we continue developing ARIA. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to a hypothetical company, Chart Health. Chart Health provides an electronic medical record software which manages sensitive patient information. The product's main feature is reading and writing to electronic medical records, or EMR for short. The team makes new software updates, also known as revisions, on a daily basis. Recently, Chart Health's service priorities changed due to new regulations and expansion to include hundreds of medical facilities nationwide. Now they want to ensure that medical records are as high integrity as possible and to have zero downtime during deployments so they could push out more updates and have a competitive edge over their competitors. When there are new revisions or new changes to a software, the software in production is replaced by a process called deployment. Currently, Chart Health's deployment pipeline looks like this. First, they take down the host server, which means their application will be down for the duration of the update. Second, they update whole or large parts of an application in one go or in one big bang. And third, they bring the server back online. The problem with traditional or big bang deployment is that it doesn't align with Chart Health's current service priorities. EMR service updates go out to everyone, which means that the entire user base will be exposed to all issues if there are any problems with the revision, thus potentially compromising the integrity of EMRs. There is also the issue with service downtime with each and every update. As part of their research, Chart Health contacted VAMP and Harness, who are real world companies that provide continuous integration and continuous deployment products to see what deployment types their customers use in modern service-based architectures. VAMP and Harness then provided customer surveys broken down by deployment types. Both surveys indicate that the most popular is rolling deployment with usage at over 40%. The second most popular is blue-green with usage at over 20%. The third most popular is Big Bang with usage at around 8%. And the least popular is Canary with usage at around 5%. In the upcoming slides, I will describe all of these deployments with the context of choosing Canary. In addition to describing traditional deployments, the term Big Bang can also be used to describe deployments in modern service-based architectures. The concept is similar, except that the deployment is isolated to all instances of a service. In this example, a service is briefly taken offline during the deployment. The old application version is replaced by the new, and the service is brought back online to service requests. The pros are, it is very easy to deploy using this technique. And the cons are similar to those in traditional deployments. There is exposure of all users to problems with the updated software, if there are any, and service downtime. 
The second deployment type is rolling deployment. It is a technique where an updated software is introduced by incrementally replacing the older application version on each of the multiple instances within their architecture. The pros are, it lets you target specific instances according to region, IP address, and other types of traffic differentiators, roll out status transparency and control, meaning it's easier to get a clear picture of how successful the deployment is going because rolling deploys are so slow, and the risk is limited to a subset of users. The cons are there is a, an extended deployment timeframe and it is not suitable for all or nothing changes, which means either everybody sees a change or nobody sees a change. The third deployment type is blue-green deployment. It requires two production environments, a blue and a green. The environment to the right, green, is the current production environment running the old application version. All network traffic is currently being routed to it. The environment to the left, blue, is an exact replica of the green, except it runs the newer application version. Zero network traffic is being routed to it. Once the blue environment is ready to receive traffic, the load balancer routes all network traffic from the green to the blue. The traffic router can redirect all network traffic to and from the blue or green on an, on an as needed basis, depending on how well the updated software is doing. If it is doing well, then it can maintain routing to the blue and destroy the green. The pros are, instantaneous rollout and rollback, and simple disaster recovery. This is due to the ability to route all traffic to and from the two environments. The cons are having duplicate production resources to make two environments and the exposure of all users to service revision issues. And finally, the last deployment type is canary deployment. It is a technique that allows a new or updated software called the canary to be analyzed alongside the old called the stable version, all in the same production environment. It has a load balancer that routes a minority of the incoming network traffic to be served by the canary, while the majority of the traffic continues to be served by the stable version. That way, the performance of both versions can be observed by using real network traffic. If the canary is doing well, then the amount of traffic can be incrementally increased and its performance monitored until the developer is confident that the canary can handle the full traffic load. Then they can replace the stable version with the canary to complete the deployment process. The pros are, there is minimized risk exposure to a minority of users and a high fidelity analysis of the canary's performance data due to the ability to test a canary by using tight segmentation control. The cons are onerous configuration, extended deployment timeframe, and complex disaster recovery because both the stable and canary instances exist in one production environment. This is in contrast to blue-green deployment, where disaster recovery is as simple as routing all traffic back to the stable version. Now that we understand how the four deployments work and the pros and cons of each, let's revisit Chart Health's deployment priorities. One, medical records should be as high integrity as possible. And two, there should be zero downtime during updates. With this understanding in mind, Chart Health narrowed down the deployment types based on three criteria. The option to have high fidelity analysis of the updated software's performance. Minority users impacted if there are bugs to the revision. And zero service downtime during the deployment. As you can see from this chart, canary deployment is the only technique that fulfills all three criteria. So Chart Health is interested in using canaries for subsequent deployment. In the upcoming section, Sam will continue with the chart health narrative to, re to review existing Canary solutions. Thanks, Yue. Now that Chart Health has decided to implement Canary deployments, the company realizes that, that there are many different ways to implement this technique. Two approaches can be derived based on the historical progression of the technique. 
Let's review the traditional can canary deployment approach. We'll refer to this as manual can canary analysis. A canary deployment routes a minority of network traffic to a revision of the production service. Performance monitoring tools then gather data relative to the canary performance. Traditionally, the performance data or metrics are reviewed by an engineer who decides whether or not the revision is fit to succeed the current production service. The latest generation of canary analysis, termed automated canary analysis, routes a minority of incoming traffic to the service revision and a freshly initialized copy of the current production service. One way to think about this is that automated canary analysis is like a scientific study or experiment, where a control group, in this case, a copy of the production service, is routed the same amount of traffic as an experiment group, the service revision. We'll refer to the baseline, the copy of the production service as the baseline going forward. The performance of each of the instances is monitored with the same monitoring tooling that would be used in manual canary analysis. An automated analysis is then performed on the time series data of all the metrics collected. Within this automated analysis, a comparison is made among the metrics data using advanced statistical techniques, resulting in a score. If the score is above a threshold, then the new service revision is promoted to production. Chart Health then looks to the existing solutions that are on the market. They begin researching existing products that would help them implement canary deployments. Chart Health discovers that the existing solutions can be divided into three categories, which we will refer to as platform services, orchestrator plugins, and standalone services. We will briefly explore platform services and orchestrator plugins and then focus our attention on standalone. Platform services are solutions constructed from managed services offered by infrastructure providers. The providers abstract away the low level details of managing the infrastructure, but ultimately it's the responsibility of the user to define and manage the infrastructure. The major benefit of this class of solutions is that it can be easily tailored to the development team's needs, but this is also a very DIY approach. The major downside of these solutions is that implementation is tedious and requires a DevOps skill set. It's not uncommon that companies lack DevOps experience, and Chart Health is one of these, and therefore they decide not to utilize platform solutions. Orchestrator plugins are another category. Orchestrator plugins work with control plane products or orchestration products like Kubernetes or Istio. Because they're using these control plane products, the, pro the canary deployments that can be achieved are rather primitive because they're limited by whatever features the control plane products may have. The major benefit of this class of solutions is that configuring, deploying, and observing deployments is nearly effortless. The major downside of this class of solutions is that a control plane or orchestration solution must be implemented and used to coordinate the entire production environment. The development team decides against orchestrator plugin solutions because their architecture isn't that complex and doesn't rise to the level of complexity that's needed uh, or justifies a control plane or orchestrator solution. The standalone category refers to software as a service or open source platforms. These products can integrate with control plane and orchestration solutions or they can perform Canary deployments independently. Canary releases are not the focus of, but rather one of many features offered by these products. Most standalone solutions aren't opinionated in the sense that they can support interfacing with most major observ observability and deployment tools. Whatever features a given standalone product lacks, it can easily interface with another solution which provides that feature. Several products in this class implement automated canary analysis, which is unique, also unique to this class. 
The biggest drawback for these solutions is that they are expensive in time to set up or they are expensive in cost. The Chart Health Medical Records Development Team decides to utilize a standalone solution because in order to ensure me medical record accuracy, they would like to take advantage of that advanced analysis of this category. However, Chart Health doesn't trust the automated promotion of new software into their production environment. So they would like to use a manual approach, although most advanced analysis tools are built to work with an automated approach. Lastly, because they lack, lack DevOps experience, they would like a tool that self-provisions its own infrastructure. Let's compare the existing standalone solutions which offer advanced statistical analysis techniques. The first is VAMP. This tool isn't self-provisioning. Uh, it's a SaaS solution, so it's rather expensive. Uh, it builds in release observability and it's very feature rich. Spinnaker is an open source solution um, it, it self provisions, unlike VAMP, but it doesn't include release observability. You need to implement your own tooling for that. It's also very feature rich. And then our tool, ARIA, provides advanced analysis. It's self provisioning and release observability, but it's tailored specifically for canary deployments. Introducing ARIA. ARIA is a self hosted open source canary development tool. ARIA self-provisions the infrastructure which enables high fidelity analysis of service provision deployed within the user's production environment. ARIA allows users to customize, to focus on customization that is beneficial to the canary analysis itself while abstracting away much of the infrastructure definition, deployment management and monitoring configuration that doesn't add benefit to a canary analysis. In order to better understand the overall structure and purpose of ARIA, we'll briefly walk through the life cycle of an ARIA canary deployment. The ARIA application itself is composed of a client user interface app and a backend server. The user configures a new ARIA deployment via the user interface and provides two Docker images to the client containing the baseline production service and the revision of that service. After the user submits the deployment, the ARIA server coordinates with AWS to provision the resources for our, the ARIA deployment, install the user provided service baseline and revision software, and configure the monitoring and analysis tooling to observe the baseline in Canary. After ARIA resources have been provisioned, the ARIA server then coordinates with the existing infrastructure to create a traffic segmentation rule, such that a minority of the incoming traffic is routed to the newly deployed ARIA Canary infrastructure. Once traffic has been routed, the user can now monitor baseline and Canary instance performance and configure advanced analysis. When ready, the user invokes a destroy command, which results in ARIA coordinating with AWS to first remove the traffic routing rule and then tear down the ARIA infrastructure, restoring the production environment to its initial state. To better understand the infrastructure that entails an ARIA deployment, let's return to Chart Health and inspect the infrastructure at a more detailed level. Within the production environment, Chart Health's EMR service is horizontally scaled via a load balancer. Once ARIA is deployed, a minority of traffic is routed from the load balancer to each of the baseline and Canary AWS EC2 instances. In this case, the baseline instance is represented by version 1.0, which is the same version of the service running in production. The Canary instance is represented by version 1.1. Once a third instance is also provisioned, within which each of the monitoring and analysis services are configured and executing. The monitoring and analysis services are persistent and unique to each ARIA Canary deployment. The ARIA user interface provides an application that allows the user to easily configure and deploy resources, access monitoring and analysis tooling, review status and event logs, and destroy resources. 
Here, the user is configuring a new deployment by defining which existing resources to coordinate with. And then defines precise traffic routing to the new ARIA deployment. Finally, the user provides the Docker images that contain their service revisions and the associated Docker compose files, which detail how those services should be initialized. ARIA communicates with AWS and after the resources are deployed, the user can then access information about the deployment and destroy it. The monitoring and analysis tool utilized by ARIA includes, well, before I say that, let me say that the users provided links to each one of the monitoring and analysis tooling applications that are running on the ARIA infrastructure. For each release, these are independent of one another. So if there was a second ARIA deployment listed on this page, uh, and the user accessed those links, they would be independent. So the tooling is not like Grafana and Referee and Prometheus are not communicating with all of your ARIA deployments. They are dedicated instances for each ARIA deployment. Prometheus is used to collect metrics from the baseline and canary instances and store them as time series data. Grafana is used to view and analyze those metrics independently, meaning that Grafana either analyzes the metrics from the Canary instance or from the baseline instance. And Kayenta, which is an analysis tool comparing performance of Canary to baseline instances. This is a test-based tool where the user sets up tests to compare the two over a given time period. In the next slides, Caleb will take a deeper look at how ARIA works under the hood. Okay, thank you, Sam. All right, we're now going to move into the technical deep dive into the technologies used by ARIA to carry out a Canary deployment. We'll start the section by looking at the AWS tools that we incorporated into ARIA that allow it to deploy and configure the Canary infrastructure. We'll then examine how ARIA implements traffic routing using load balancers. After that, we'll look at the computing resources deployed by ARIA to run the baseline and Canary versions of our target application. We'll finish the deep dive by looking at the monitoring and analysis toolkit configured by ARIA. These include the monitoring tools Prometheus and Grafana and the analysis tools Kayenta and Referee. So ARIA uses several technologies to configure, deploy, and destroy AWS resources. AWS CloudFormation is an infrastructure as code tool that allows for the provisioning and configuration of resource stacks based on developer-defined templates. While you can build these templates by hand, write them out, you can also use the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or CDK, to abstract away cloud formation and ex express your desired resource stack in terms of code. This is what ARIA does. The code is turned into cloud formation templates and the templates are then used to deploy the resources defining the Canary infrastructure. ARIA also uses the AWS Software Development Kit or SDK because it's a highly flexible tool that can interact with a variety of AWS services through code. While the CDK is specialized for creating and destroying resources, there are some things that it can't do easily or at all. One example of a task for which ARIA uses the SDK is configuring a user's existing load balancers so that they can route traffic to ARIA's Canary infrastructure. We're going to discuss load balancers in more detail right now. A canary deployment requires that some amount of traffic be split between the production version of an application 
and the canary version. Traffic splitting or traffic routing is typically accomplished using a load balancer, which is an application that receives network traffic and then redistributes it equitably between a number of servers running the production application. ARIA specifically implements traffic routing by making use of the capabilities of an AWS application load balancer, or ALB for short. ARIA is designed to work with AWS production environments that have an existing application load balancer routing traffic to instances of a production application. The ALB routes traffic at the application layer, and so it has a rich feature set for routing HTTP, HTTPS traffic. Application load balancers consist of one or more listeners, and a listener is defined by a combination of a port and a protocol. In the example here, you can see a listener that detects HTTP traffic on port 80. Each listener also has one or more rules. And when a listener receives a piece of traffic of the appropriate protocol on the port it listens in, it goes down the list of rules. If a piece of traffic meets the condition to trigger a rule, a specific action is then triggered. The action in this example is to forward any traffic to the production servers. This is a default rule, meaning it always executes. ARIA allows a user to create a new rule on an existing application load balancer listener. By setting this rule at a high priority, it can supersede the normal behavior of the listener. Traffic that triggers the ARIA rule is forwarded to three target groups. One target group contains the production version of the application. One target group contains the baseline version of the application, and one contains the canary version of the application. The baseline and canary targets both receiving the same amount of traffic. Another feature ARIA implements is that it configures the listener to perform a health check on a path specified by the user. What this means is that the canary infrastructure created by ARIA will not receive traffic until it is ready and responsive. So no requests will ever be lost. When ARIA destroys a canary deployment, all it has to do is destroy the rule put on the application load balancer listener, which then resumes the routing behavior it exhibited prior to the ARIA deployment. The rules that ARIA creates can be conditionally applied. So canary traffic can be limited by filters such as HTTP request method, HTTP header value, or URL path pattern. Sticky sessions can also be implemented, ensuring that users from a given IP address will always return to the version of the application they were originally routed to. If a user is routed to the canary application and they refresh their browser, they'll be taken back to the Canary application and not instead be shunted to the production version. We'll move on to the computing resources, the instances which run our Canary applications. First, we'll discuss the role of the baseline instance in a Canary deployment. Canary deployments require a new Canary version of an application but it is also considered good practice to deploy a baseline version of the application as well. The baseline application is identical to the production application, but the instances running the baseline are created alongside the canary instances. And this minimizes any time sensitive variance in performance between the old and the new versions of the software. So you get a better analysis comparing the baseline and the canary than you would get comparing the production instances and the canary. ARIA deploys the baseline and canary applications to AWS Elastic Compute Cloud, EC2, instances. These instances are automatically configured with both Docker and Docker Compose. For both the baseline and canary versions, the user prepares Docker image files in the form of tarball archives 
and Docker Compose setup files. And then both of these assets are transferred to the baseline and Canary instances and used to initialize the applications. ARIA also installs an application called Node Exporter on each of these instances. This is going to be described in more detail soon. But for now, just know that it's a tool that helps collect data about the Canary deployment. The final resource deployed by ARIA is the Monitor instance. This is a larger EC2 instance that holds a collection of the monitoring and analysis tools that can help a user investigate their Canary application. Like the baseline and Canary instances, ARIA also installs Docker and Docker Compose on the monitor instance. All of the tools in this instance run as part of an interconnected Docker network and are immediately ready to use. The tools fall into two categories, monitoring and analysis. Monitoring tools collect, store, and display metrics data generated by the applications in our Canary infrastructure. In contrast, analysis tools process those metrics to provide insight and recommendations regarding the canary. We'll now examine the monitoring tools Prometheus and Grafana. Prometheus is a popular open source time series database that's used to log metrics from targets. The Prometheus server operates on an HTTP pull model scraping metrics from targets at configured intervals by making HTTP requests. The metrics are stored on disk as time series data and can then be queried and visualized in the Prometheus front end using the PromQL query language. Prometheus can identify targets through service discovery. And ARIA automatically configures Prometheus to allow it to begin collecting metrics from deployed baseline and Canary EC2 instances immediately. In addition to Prometheus, ARIA also installs Grafana, a graphical interface and dashboard builder, which is often used side by side with Prometheus. An ARIA user can configure Grafana to display rich visualizations of multiple queries and can compare the baseline and Canary instances at a glance. A bit more about how Prometheus works. Prometheus collects metrics by pulling from HTTP endpoints. These endpoints can exist on two kinds of target, a standalone exporter or an instrumented application. ARIA supports both. An exporter is a standalone application that collects metrics and exposes them for Prometheus to use. Recall we said earlier that ARIA automatically installs something called Node Exporter on our baseline and Canary instances. Node Exporter is an exporter, and it exposes hardware and operating system metrics that are monitored by Unix-based systems. The other kind of Prometheus target is an instrumented application. Developers can incorporate a Prometheus client library into their application. It can then collect and calculate metrics and expose them on an HTTP endpoint. For example, an instrumented web application may calculate and expose metrics about the time required to service a request, the number of requests it's received over a given time, or the rate of request failure. Users have to instrument their applications themselves but ARIA can configure Prometheus to scrape the endpoints of such an already instrumented application. Moving on to the analysis tool Kayenta and its graphical front end referee. Kayenta is a statistical judge which can be used to accurately determine the health of a Canary application by comparing metrics from the Canary and baseline instances. While a human engineer may be able to judge a canary by examining the metrics themselves, say in a Grafana dashboard, by using a statistical judge, they can help filter signal from noise and get a more objective assessment of the canary. Kayenta interacts with metrics provided by Prometheus. Users may configure analysis requests and send them to the Kayenta API or they can make use of the graphical front-end referee. Kayenta was originally created as a component of Spinnaker, a continuous delivery platform created by Netflix. 
While Spinnaker uses Kayenta to judge and promote canaries to production automatically without human intervention, Aria instead offers Kayenta as a supplemental tool for users who wish to explore the advanced realm of canary analysis and gain more confidence in these tools. A user configures an analysis to examine one or more metrics over a given time period. They may also weight the relative importance of those metrics. For example, a user may consider an application's memory usage to be much more important than its request response time or its request error rate. The user then sets a threshold for a passed score. Kayenta performs an analysis, returns the results, and these results include a numerical score, which can then be, which can then be used to deliver a verdict of healthy or unhealthy for the canary. So with that, we've concluded the technical deep dive. We're going to go now to Savi, who is going to discuss some of the engineering challenges we faced while building ARIA and some of the trade-offs that we had to make. Thank you, Caleb. We'll first talk about the limitations we faced with the CDK and how we got around those limitations. We'll then look at some of the challenges with regards to configuring and deploying the Canary and baseline instances. Lastly, we'll explore the decisions we made regarding setting up all the monitoring and analysis tools to talk to each other. We decided early on that we wanted to use the AWS CDK due to its ability to easily express AWS infrastructure in terms of code. However, Although it was easy to create and destroy resource stacks, we ran into several difficulties and limitations when we tried to interact with the existing infrastructure of the production environment. We discovered that there were several assumptions about how the CDK was intended to be used that were not true for our use case. The CDK was designed to be used on its own as a command line tool, not programmatically. It's really more of a standalone tool for defining infrastructure than something you can incorporate into another code base and invoke. Another assumption we found was that each CDK project is meant to correspond to a single stack of resources, which it can deploy, destroy, and modify. It has no native capability to fetch information about existing resources, much less interact with them. These assumptions ran counter to how we wanted to develop ARIA. We wanted ARIA to have a UI with a rich ability to configure and monitor Canary deployments. For this, we needed ARIA to work with a user's existing AWS resources. Furthermore, we wanted ARIA to be able to launch multiple Canary deployments at any given time, which ran counter to the CDK's assumption of one project corresponds to one resource stack. We did manage, however, to solve these problem and have ARIA fulfill our original expectations. We just had to get creative. First, we incorporated the AWS SDK into our code base. The SDK allows programmatic access to a variety of AWS services. While the CDK is specialized for creating and destroying resource stacks, we were able to use the SDK to fill in missing features, including getting the user's AWS profile information from the local environment, using that profile information to look up existing production resources and retrieving important configuration information from those resources, and creating and destroying traffic routing rules on a user's existing load balancer. Second, the classes used to define resource stacks in the CDK didn't have all the features we needed. So we created a wrapper library around the CDK core library. The wrapper library we created incorporates the SDK and contains functions which extend the CDK core library functions and does not utilize the CLI commands. This made it possible for the resource stacks to accept the additional configuration parameters needed to make the user's production and canary infrastructure compatible with each other. This also made it easier to deploy multiple Canary deployments from our app. 
Next, we'll discuss some challenges we faced in installing our users' applications onto the EC2 instances. ARIA requires users to upload their Canary and baseline applications in the form of Docker images, which is the industry standard for containerized applications. This introduced us to the challenge of how to transfer our users' Docker images onto the EC2 instances. If the images were stored in a public registry, it would be simple to add scripts to the EC2 instances to pull the images at launch time. However, there are many different Docker registries. Also, our users' images may be stored on private registries or not be stored in a registry at all. To solve this issue, we utilize the Docker save and Docker load commands. Docker save converts an image into a tar archive, while Docker load converts that archive back into an image. Now, our users are able to provide ARIA with tar files created from Docker images, and we can convert those files back into images on the EC2 instances. However, we were faced with a further challenge of how to transfer the user's tar files onto the EC2 instances. While the CDK allows users to run a user script at the time of an EC2 creation, there is no easy way to transfer a file onto the instance. The way we solved this was to add the user's Docker tar files to a temporary AWS S3 storage bucket. That way, in the CDK, we could configure the EC2 instances to download those tar files from the S3 bucket. We also included commands in the EC2 user scripts to load the Docker images from the tar files and run containers from those images at launch time. Next, we'll look at how we chose Node Exporter. There are many different types of exporters, including those related to hardware, database, HTTP traffic, logging, and other types. The challenge we faced was that the type of metrics that are important will vary from application to application. Some applications may prioritize latency or HTTP errors, while other applications may prioritize what is happening at the database. And other applications may not even be using the HTTP protocol, but instead GRCP, which is a popular protocol used with microservices. Because system level metrics are relevant no matter the type of application, we decided to use the official node exporter. Node Exporter exposes system level metrics like those related to disk, CPU, and the network. The downside, however, is that you don't get HTTP related metrics. Next, we'll discuss our monitoring and analysis toolkit. Our decisions about deploying the monitoring and analysis toolkit were driven by our experiences in installing and configuring those tools. We decided to install all the tools on one large EC2 instance using Docker images to avoid dependency issues and to ensure a smooth installation. This had other benefits as well. Because our tools were all Dockerized on the same machine, we could use a Docker network to simplify communication between them. We could also specify that some tools depend on one another, making sure that each one spins up in the correct order to avoid errors. Our experience installing and configuring the monitoring and analysis tools was marked by many frustrations. The configuration scripts we developed to overcome these hurdles proved to be an even more important part of ARIA's value proposition than we had first thought, enabling users to make use of tools like Kayenta without getting stuck on troubleshooting. We're proud with what we built with ARIA. However, there are certain areas that we would like to add support for in the future. First is the ability to increase and decrease existing Canary traffic. Currently, users can set how much traffic a Canary receives only in the initial deployment. We would like to add the ability to adjust the traffic of an existing Canary. Second, many applications that implement microservices use an API gateway. An API gateway sits in front of a user's microservice application and forwards traffic to the proper destination. We would like to support those applications that use an API gateway. Third and last, ARIA currently works with applications deployed with AWS. We would like to add support for other cloud providers like Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. That's the end of our talk. 
Thank you for coming. Here is the team that built ARIA.